Yeah, so I have not really followed the detailed politics of Brexit. I haven't made much of a study of it. The big picture, though, is pretty much that um, those in charge, meaning the forces of global capital, and let me just say, I am not currently, nor have I ever been, a member of the American Communist Party. The forces of global capital are going to do their best to make sure that whatever happens, whether it's called Brexit, whether the UK officially leaves the European Union or not, that it's not going to impede the flow of capital and the interests of corporations and banks. As long as that is the case, they're going to be pretty much okay with whatever um, result happens with the movement of people, with, with immigration, um, with border, matters of border and security and that kind of stuff. They don't care so much about that. And, and that's kind of ironic because I think that a lot of the impetus for the Brexit vote came from a dissatisfaction with the economic status quo. Like you could say, and I think that just to, to ascribe it to xenophobia and bigotry is a very superficial level of explanation because you have to ask, well, what made tens of millions of people uh, all of a sudden into bigots and xenophobes? Not that there hasn't been xenophobia in the UK for a long time, but, but to condemn that many people and to ignore the question, what is the engine from which racist attitudes come? Why are people dissatisfied? A lot of that comes down to do with, a lot of it comes down to economics and the, the dwindling prospects of joining the middle class or the upper middle class and, and the, the uh, eroding social contract and how every year and certainly over a generation, it just gets harder and harder to maintain a lifestyle that was considered to be normal. And so many people are struggling. So in that situation, of course, you're going to look for people to blame. And yeah, immigrants are certainly... Uh, an easy target. So, yeah, I'm not. So I'm not saying that there's no uh, bigotry and racism and xenophobia in the United Kingdom. But I'm, I think that the Brexit vote was coming from a much deeper place, like a and to to go against the establishment. I mean, pretty much every establishment media outlet was in favor of remaining in the EU. Yet people defied the authorities and voted for Brexit anyway. And that also is a symptom of a rejection of authority and the, the uh, shrinking uh, or the, the weakening of the legitimacy of the government and the elites in general. So it is ironic then, or maybe a cynical person would say to be expected, that however Brexit plays out, it's not going to meet that deep satisfaction, but it's going to be somehow maneuvered so that the basic economic structure is maintained. To make it all about immigration and you know anti-immigrant sentiment and stuff, that um, conveniently avoids a lot of difficult issues that need attention.